Hello, I'm Cathy Ford, the Scottish Book Trust Virtual Writer in Residence. Welcome to the third podcast on creative writing. Today I'm going to talk about dialogue. Writing dialogue to me in a story is just as important as character and I absolutely love writing dialogue. I spend a long, long time on it though. Sometimes I, I, I rewrite every line in a story a hundred times just to get it sounding as realistic as I can. In the last podcast where we talked about character and you looked at somebody you know and how they behaved when they were happy or sad or stressed, you probably heard in your head the way they spoke, the way their voice was, whether it was loud or quiet or whether they spoke fast or whether they sounded angry. We can all imagine somebody we know in different circumstances and we, we know the kind of language that they would use. I bet you could all imagine the way your mum would behave if she met the Queen, for example, and the kind of language that she would use. It would be different from the normal language she would use if she was asking you to come in for your dinner, for example. We can imagine the way somebody is going to speak and, and, going to, and, and behave. And the way somebody talks says an awful lot about them. The way we speak is not perfect. We pause, we stammer, we get stuck for our words sometimes, and we don't speak in perfect, clear English grammar all the time. And it's important, I think, when you're writing dialogue that you don't worry too much about making your sentences perfect. Another thing about writing dialogue is that it's important to try and figure out the things that you leave out because things that you don't say in exchanges between characters actually tells you just as much as what's actually being said. There's one book that I've read recently that has a chapter in it in which what is not said between the characters perfectly illustrates this. The book is Bob Child by Siobhan Dowd and the chapter is chapter 41. This book is set in Northern Ireland in the early 1980s during the troubles there. And the main character, Fergus, has an older brother, Joe, who has gone on hunger strike and he's in prison. And in chapter 41, the prison doctor phones home to tell Joe and his parents that the brother is now in a coma and unless his family give permission for him to be fed or through a drip, he's going to die. So as you can imagine, it's a situation of huge charged emotion. And the whole chapter, lots of which takes place around the kitchen table, a very, very ordinary setting, has some of the best dialogue that I've ever read in a book. And a lot of what is said is actually done via body language and gesture. And I'll give you three brief examples. When Fergus is taking the phone call about his brother from the doctor, he winds and winds the cord of the telephone round his hand and that shows, as we've been talking about, how your body language reflects how you feel. That shows how tense and worried he is. When they're all having a cup of tea round the table to discuss this phone call, his mum asks for sugar in her tea and Joe says, but you don't take sugar. And his mum just tells him to put sugar in her cup. And the fact that her behaviour has changed from what she does normally shows how worried and stressed and upset she is. And then there's a final amazing um, piece of body language in this, in this chapter where the mother, who is angry at her husband's decision to let this son continue with his hunger strike, raises her hand to slap her husband across the face. And he stops her hand... And in, but, but it's not so that she um, won't slap him. He stops her hand and he kisses it. And I think that gesture speaks volumes. Now here's task three. And I hope some of you might quite enjoy this and find it a bit of fun. I want you to imagine somebody you really know very, very well. It might be the character that you described in task two. It could be somebody else. And that person goes into... Your local, their local shop, their paper shop or their newsagent. And in there, there's one, there's a megastar. Now, I won't spoil it by suggesting too, ma too many megastars, but somebody absolutely massive like Beyonce or 
Simon Cowell or Barack Obama, you decide. I really, or could be a footballer or a sports star, somebody really, really famous that you don't, you don't expect to see down your local shop. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine what your character, the character that you've picked, would say about what's just happened. Hear your character's voice in your head. Imagine their tone of voice. Imagine the things they're going to notice about this situation. For example, supposing Beyonce was in the news agents and it was your granddad that was in buying his evening times. He might not know who Beyonce is and as far as he's concerned, there's just this very glamorous woman standing asking for a Yorkie bar and everybody in the shop's flapping and he is more interested in the fact that the people in the shop aren't giving him his paper than seeing Beyonce. Everybody's going to have a different reaction, but what I really want you to do is try and capture the voice of the person you know reporting something. Remember I said earlier on in this task that dialogue doesn't have to be lots and lots of words, and sometimes the less words you use, the better. Now imagine it, either you or the person that you described meeting the big celebrity and the superstar is sending a text to somebody telling them what they've just seen. Write that text. You're not going to use lots of words, are you? You're going to choose them really, really carefully. And whoever they're sending the text to, get them to text back with their replies of shock, disbelief, surprise in text language. Why not write a mini play about the incident in your local paper shop? You could have somebody playing Beyonce. You could have somebody playing your grandpa or your mum or your dad. You could have other shopkeepers. This is all going to be written in dialogue. There will be no description. So absolutely every single word that people say is going to be important. As always, we'd love you to send anything you do to teen at scottishbooktrust.com and we'll have a look at them and I'll see you in the next podcast.